Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. And I am super elated to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop competition tonight. Tonight, it looks like we are going to LHD. This is 2020, a Jack and Jill finals in one of my favorite cities in the world, Barcelona. It's going down, folks. I'm going to tell you exactly who my favorite couple was and why. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I am going to give you the absolute truth about my opinion, so hold tight, and we're going to get right into this video. Are you ready? Hey. All right, here we go. I hope, I hope this is good. I got a gut feeling it will be. Yeah, good band. Okay, so my eyes are going around to see if I see uh, those things that I like. And so far, first thing I like is I don't see anybody I know. And that's pretty rare. <laughs> Actually, no, I take that back. I just saw somebody I know. Uh, okay. But they're not from Barcelona, so this is going to be interesting to see what happens. Okay. So on a technical standpoint, it looks like there are no problems. There's really nothing I can judge. Everybody can swing dance. So now we got to get into those nuanced things. The things that most judges will never tell you. The rest of the competition now is completely subjective. Because clearly they can all dance. Done. This is a good warm up. This is a good warm up. Get into it. All right, I'm sorry to say I see a lot of copycats already. So people are gonna get marked down really hard. I don't wanna see people just imitating the teachers of the month. Let's get right into it. Pull no punches. Show me something original. Timothy, Timothy.
look at everybody's name down. So ah, oh, it's going so fast. So I'll just have to describe everyone. This looks like round two. This is the one I really watch. I want to see if people keep up the intensity. Okay. Totally flexible. She is not human. She's a Terminator. That's right, just play it off. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
This is tough. This is tough, tough, tough. That was good. That was good. Congrats to everybody who did this. Now let's get down into it. Now I got to say right up front, it is really refreshing to see a lot of new dancers that I've never seen before. Hold on, let me close that closet. I feel like somebody's watching me in my closet. But I'm telling you, I don't often get a chance to uh, see a lot of fresh faces who are really good dancers. There's a lot of new faces who are, you know, struggling to kind of get to that next level, but recently it just seems as if there are a lot of people who are really putting in a lot of hard work and maximizing the knowledge that is so prevalent that's out there right now for the technical parts of the dance. We got workshops, we got events, we got all these different things, schools in Barcelona. So people can learn how to do Lindy Hop and that's really amazing to see that we have a lot of fresh people into the new funnel. We got we to gotta hopefully spit out something new at the end of that funnel. A new fresh leader and a follower that will inspire generations of dancers. And that doesn't just happen like that. It doesn't just happen like that. And so in this competition, <clears throat> I got to say straight up, I already had my top three within the first set. I can tell who these people are, what their level is, what they can do, what their limitations are. I don't even have to literally watch them dance because they can already dance. So I wasn't really judging them for the technical parts of this dance until you know maybe some of them were a little disjointed, things like that. That happens, but that isn't the main thing that differentiates who the winner is of a Jack and Jill competition. Let's be honest, that's not the real reason because it's expected that you can dance when you enter a Jack and Jill competition. So let me first say, uh, the couple for me that got third place, obviously uh, had the skill set that at minimum you have to be able to do to get into a competition, which really is the, the smallest part of Lindy Hop. The most objective part of Lindy Hop is the smallest part. And that's what I like to call control. Can I actually see the leader and the follower do their roles together without disrupting one another. Here's what I mean. Could I see the leader initiate an idea and the follower receive that energy and continue with that idea? And I like to see that without either the follower creating her own idea and the leader doing his own idea. I don't, I don't like to see the disjointedness of that. So for me, that is the technique. If you can do that, and have uh, a, a, just a, a modicum of simplicity in that movement so that it's lucid and fluid that we can see the idea, the cause and the effect, the rhythm section, the soloist, the male, the female, the opposites, the coin. This is what we're talking about. Control. Can we see that process happen? And I can tell you right now, all three of the people who got top three for me had control. <clears throat> so I got to tell you, the one I got third place, that was the main thing that they had. For me, that was the only thing that they had that was a little bit higher than the other the dancers. So uh, I'm going to have to go to, to the couple. And I couldn't get everybody's names down in time because it was happening so fast. And I didn't want to divert my attention to the names and potentially miss out on uh, something that they were doing that was really cool. So uh, let me see. Uh, Timote, Timote and Anna. Yes, uh, they're third place for me, even though I liked her dress the best. <laughs> she had like the best dress, the coolest hat that went with that. 
Um, I liked them because they looked like one body. They literally looked like one body sharing energy at different points. Um, I could see that everything was predictable. That's not really a strong determinant for me in terms of if you're good at the control or not. But it did tell me that the tone and how they were dancing was matching. That doesn't necessarily mean it was good. You could have an opposite tone and still crush it based on the control and some of the other ideas that I look for. But for me, they were third place because they had the control, they were nice and safe, and they would be the kind of dancer I would use to teach a Lindy Hop lesson for someone who's never learned Lindy Hop before. Very predictable movements, very safe movements, very clear movements. And at minimum, that's going to get you third place. That really says a lot about how simple swing dancing can be. So they're third place for me. <clears throat> Second place now is a little bit more complicated. Now I'm going to tell you, the, the better the common denominator is or the ratio or the mean of dancers where everyone's technique is so good, the, the second thing I look for might change a little bit because everybody might actually have this too. And that aspect of comp competing would be the timing. Now, timing, I, I specifically mean this idea in a very macro phrase and in a very micro phrase. So here's what I mean. Typically, every fourth eight count, the music's going to change and do something different. And most dancers can hear that at this level. They can hear it and they typically will like repeat something at that time or break whatever the flow was that they were having previously to that spot in the music and just simply do something different. People will call that musicality. I just call it timing. So uh, the couple that had that for me, um, yeah, she had a like red shirt on, black pants, and he had like, I think it was like a black, it looks like green, green pants and a white shirt, something like that. They had some good stuff. They had some timing. The, the, what was better for me is it wasn't necessarily the timing that made me want to put them in second. The, the macro timing in terms of the phrase. What made me want to put them in second was the timing that the follower was doing. The follower was actually embellishing a lot of the micro timing. Some of the, some of the uh, instruments that the musicians were playing were not just in the rhythm section, just hitting the metronome. They were the saxophone player was doing different things. And I felt when I was watching them that I could hear that and I could see that because of the follower. She was actually moving and adding more things in there that made it more interesting on, and, a, and a, from a different perspective. Third place was like 2D for me. Second place was like 3D. It's just, just there's a different element of musicality that's there. And again, this is totally subjective. They can all dance. It was really about the placement of the ideas with the music that differentiates a person from third place to second, which means you can have a bad night and be a better dancer and be more popular and still not win. So don't take it too harshly. And you know, when you look at it, it, it really is subjective. Did you like it or not? And so I liked the third place, but I didn't like them enough to say, it's inspiring to me on a music level. They were just on top of the music, moving through it, not doing anything wrong. But for me, they were lacking the ability to amplify the music. And I felt the second place couple were actually doing that well. Primarily because of the follower. I'm not saying the leader was strong at that. I'm saying the follower for me, she, she crushed it. Now, what's interesting, there was another follower and I just got to give her a shout out because she was my favorite dancer out of all of the dancers that were there. How weird is that? So I, I don't just look at the leaders. I'm looking at the whole body. There are two people coming together to make one body and they're sharing energy at different points. So the call is really brief, but the effect is really what's happening. And so when I see the effect and I see it done well, and I can see personality, this follower was the best dancer to me. Because she could amplify the music, she could follow her partner with the control, she could be that effect, the, the cause and effect that we all hope to see with good technique, but she was doing way more than that. She had the red pants on. She had like a white uh, jacket with red pants. She was amazing. 
I really liked her dancing. She was my favorite dancer out of this whole... Uh, she's the greatest dancer of the event. Close the door. She's the greatest. <laughs> she was my favorite to watch. So um, I don't know what her name is. I can't remember because it was just going too fast. But shout out to her. She crushed it. So uh, first place. First place. This was interesting because I thought <clears throat> there were a couple moments where they kind of almost got disconnected. And then it didn't happen. And those are the moments for me that say these people are willing to try something just because. They are not willing to say, oh, it's cold outside. I'm just going to stay indoors. They're going to say, you know what? I haven't been swimming in a long time. I know it's cold outside. Let's go to the beach right now in Barcelona. I know it's freezing, but we're going swimming right now. They had that attitude. And I think... I think both the leader and the follower had this kind of energy that said, I'm going with you. I am really ready to just get out there and crush it. I don't care if something comes at the last minute. We catch each other at the last minute and the timing uh, is just near perfect, but also nearly off. And that goes to the couple with, she had the yellow dress on. It was like yellow and white, kind of cut like this. He had brown pants on, white shirt and a brown tie, brown shoes. He was wearing leather shoes. And... For, for me, they were first. And I knew they were first on the warm-up. On the warm-up. I'm not going to tell you the reason why I knew. But for me, they were first. Control. Timing. But that third element that I look for is the intangible quality. Sometimes. Most of the time, I'm looking for ingenuity. Something we haven't seen before. Or something that is very similar to something we've seen before. Interpret it a new and fresh way. And they did that. I didn't see any extraordinarily original moves, nor did I see anything interpreted a fresh way. What I saw that made them have the, the clear cut decision to be first place, they had an energy level that says we are going to fight. We want to win this. And I did not feel the other couples had that as much. I felt they just, this couple had this, what I call this raw energy. They had battle mode energy. And I love that. They were, they were vulnerable. They were trying different moves. They almost got disconnected and they didn't. And they got together and they were just like both celebrating like, yes, we nailed it. That kind of stuff. That's, that's raw. That's real. That's the spirit of Lindy Hop. That competitive edge that a lot of the original dancers have that many of the hip hop dancers have basically inherited. They don't even know that Lindy Hop and jazz is where we come from. And I'm a hip hop dancer. I've learned the history. But these dancers had that raw energy. And I have to respect that because that is the basis for where the ingenuity comes from. You have to be fearless. You've got to be willing to do something you haven't done before. And you have to be still controlled at the same time. Calculated risk. Decorated with a bit of unbelievable fearless ambition. I love that. So shout out to them. They crushed it. Uh, let me see if I can get their names on this video. I think I can. Uh, uh, yeah, it looks like it. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Berhua. Berhua and Zhu Zhu Young. Yeah, Zhu Young and Berhua. I'm not sure if I'm saying Berhua the right way or not, but for me, pay attention to them. Pay attention. That kind of energy says they, they have something to say. I don't know if they're partnered together, but that's a hint. When you have that kind of chemistry, those are those moments where they will look back at years and go, you know what? We danced together in that Jack and Jill. We've been teaching all these years. That's how we met. I have those moments. I had those moments. My first partner was from Barcelona, my first international partner. Didn't know who she was, and I had to show up to an event, and I was frustrated. I'm like, who's this person I'm working with? I'm jet lagged. We got to teach tomorrow on Saturday morning. How's this going to work? And they were like, well, you guys got to do a teacher demo. We're going to do the California routine. I was like, what's that? I got to learn the California routine, so I have to learn that in like 15 minutes. <laughs> we learned that, and I realized the person I learned it with was someone I social danced with, and I thought, man, this girl's amazing. Wow, what's her name? 
So I got her name and I was like, man, I hope I run into her again. But then when we started working on the routine for that evening, that California routine, it was the same person, folks. And her name is Sonia Ortega Betriu, one of the greatest social dancers in the world. So it was a real honor for me to have these kind of moments, this kind of moment. So if you guys want to see that moment where we jammed out, <laughs> it was great. I'll leave the description. I'll, I'll leave the link in the description so you can check out our first time working together. We literally just met that that afternoon, choreographed something in like 15 minutes, and then just slam went out there and performed it. And it worked out. Mostly. Anyway, who did you guys think won this competition? These are the dancers I thought who won this competition. Give them a shout out. Let me know what you thought about these dancers. If you are if you are not in the game yet, you need to start doing Jack and Jill's. It's intimidating, but you have to do it. You've got to put some pressure on yourself to be able to prove what it is that you're doing social dancing uh, in front of an audience. It puts a lot of necessary fear on you to allow whatever you've been working on to come out in a very healthy way. It's only when we have to survive when we do things. And so the beauty about this dance is if you put some calculated pressure on yourself, you will find a new creative you just waiting to be birthed. So I encourage you to do it. If you haven't done it before and you're just like, Lindy Hop's too complicated, I cannot get into a competition like that, I encourage you to check out some of my courses. I spent over 10,000 hours, documented hours, trying to demystify how complicated Lindy Hop has been perceived. And I figured it out. It took me a long time and you guys just get to benefit from it. So... It, it, was a, it was a struggle for me, but once I figured out that the majority of it is subjective and a whole lot of it, I'd say about 80% of it, is subjective, <clears throat> about 20% of it is objective, it really will shift your mindset to realize the things that are objective are not hard to understand, but they're actually difficult to do and to perfect. Easy things done over a long period of time. So you can accelerate your learning curve if you know what those things are and have a very clear system on how you can fix yourself on your social dancing. So we teach that in our school and I'd love to give you a taste. So check out some of my uh, courses. If I got over 30 courses, you can just check out to see what our community is doing online. We got a lot of students from all over the world. Every week I'm posting new choreography, new stuff, um, new social dance material to inspire you, to help, hopefully help you find who you are and your unique fingerprint to share with the rest of the world. So with that said, hopefully I get a chance to see you guys in one of my classes online. If not, let me know what you guys thought about LHD 2020 Jack and Jill finals in the comment section below. With that said, I will see you all in the next reaction video. Take care.